welcome back to another video. So we've got something a bit different today. We've got a steel shield to make around the bell housing of this tractor puller. So this is a Fox and Major tractor puller. And it's fitted with a, I think it's a 380 Ford cargo engine with a big Bosch injector pump. Now the reason you'd want a shield <coughs> around the bell housing is for safety. Because the tractor puller, you're revving them a lot harder than what like the flywheel's designed for. And also because you're setting off in a high gear, the clutch is getting a lot more heat and abuse than it would do as standard. And it has been known for flywheels to explode if you're still using the cast flywheel. Um, I am sure what whether this has a steel flywheel or cast flywheel, I'm not sure. But even if you do have all steel clutch, if you follow the proper rules, you're still supposed to have a shield around the bell housing. I think is it if you rev up to 2,800, you can get away with a steel um, steel shield. If you rev over 2,800, you're supposed to have a like a Kevlar shatter blanket. But that's only if you're following like the BTPA rule book, the British Tractor Pulling Association rule book. This is it's only an independent puller, so the rules are a lot more relaxed. But even still, having a 10 mil shield around the bell housing is a lot better than just having nothing like it has now. Now with these engines, because they were non-turbo as standard, and then because I've had these big Bosch P pumps put on them and bigger injectors and turbos and everything. You usually lower the compression as well. You usually skim a bit off the top of the pistons. And they're usually running a lot more advanced timing than what they usually are, which makes them start not very well. So you have to use a li little bit of liquid help to get them going, a bit of ether. So we'll, uh, we'll fire up now and take it around to the workshop. Right, she's in the workshop now. As she takes some driving, the clutch is ridiculously heavy. You nearly need both legs to press the clutch down. And obviously it's got no power steering. But anyway, she's in. So we'll take the bonnet off first. We'll take the battery box off. This fuel filter, we'll have to move that out of the way. Um, and then what I was thinking, I was thinking I could maybe like, well, there'll be three sides, there'll be a lid, four sides, there'll be a lid, two side plates, and then plate underneath. What I was thinking is I could maybe press the lid, like flat on top, press it down this side, and then have a row of bolts across here to bolt the side plate on. But when you look at the other side, when you look at this side where the start motor is, 
it's sort of nearly square. It comes out and then nearly square straight down. So I can't really press anything around this side. So I think for the top, I'll just make it flat top. I'll just make it like a square. And then these side plates, I'll have to come around here, around there, and then I'll maybe press them down a little bit and then have a flat plate across the bottom. Um, them little gussets are going to make it awkward because really the plate want to be bolted on there, down to there and across. So whether I, whether I remove them or whether I just put a little notch in the plate to go around it, and round here, and then back across there. And it's supposed to be from like the back face, back face of the flywheel to cover the flywheel and all the clutch and everything. So the plate will be from there to about here somewhere. That's cross shaft, so obviously the clutch doesn't come any further than what the cross shaft is. So the plates will be about 250 mil. I'll make them 250 mil, and then I can still keep the original mount for the battery tray, because I need the battery tray to still be in the same place because where these bonnet catches clip onto. Is all part of this like bulkhead and battery tray. So yeah, I'll start by taking the bonnet off. I don't know what the bonnet's made out of. It's it's bloody heavy. It's nearly a two-man operation lifting that off. So we've got the bonnet off, I'll take the battery off. I might be able to get away with leaving the battery tray on if I can just take that, that bracket out there and then take this fuel filter off. So I've got that battery tray bracket loose now. The throttle cable and the stopper cable run through it. So I'll have to take the stopper cable off there and there and then obviously the same with the stop. Then we get that bracket out and hopefully we don't need to take any of this lot off. Right, so I've got that bracket taken out now. We need to get a measurement across there on how wide I need the plate to be. It just so happens that I have a plate. This is off my tractor when I made I had a major. Well I do have a major. Um and this is the top plate I made for mine, so I can just measure that, which is five hundred and ten mil. Um the only thing I'll have to do different with this one. These cargo engines have a water part at the back of the head the back of the block so i'll have to notch a bit out around there for that but other than that i'll just make it same width and just square like rectangle same as that maybe not didn't quite need to be as wide only 250 mil right so i've got me uh me drawing basically drawn of what i need so i can draw it on the computer and then i can cnc plasma them out right so i've got me uh, plates drawn now then the that's one side plate, that's the other side plate, that's the top plate, and then they're like the bolt strips that I'll uh, drill and tap, and then they'll get welded onto the, this top bit and then bolt up onto them side plates. So I'll get them cut out, get them to fit, and then afterwards I'll then I'll work out what the bottom plate needs to be. Right, so that's loaded in now. I have to remove. I have to take that plate at 25 mil off, 
and then put my 10mm plate on and then we can cut them out. Right, so I've got one, I've got the top cut out and one side cut out. I've just lifted that one out just to try it on the tractor to make sure it's right before I cut the second one out. So that's what it looks like on the tractor. I think this is maybe the other side one because the slightly different, where this gussie has been welded in is slightly different. So that measurement's slightly different on one than it is on the other. So I think this is the other side. But it fits all right, that. That'll have a press across there and that'll go down at that angle down into the middle of the tractor and then obviously the lid will go in the in there then I might make some cutouts as well to fill in the gap in there just to you know enclose it in a bit better yeah, I'm happy with that we'll uh, cut the other one out now Right, so I'll clean these bits up now and then there's these holes to drill through uh, 12 and a half mil and then these holes in here to drill through and tap with M12 thread and then these bits will get welded onto the lid and then they'll bolt, bolt onto the back side of that to hold it all together. drilled now I've got the trickier job of marking and drilling these two holes that are going to hold these side panels on uh, I'll have to do some measuring and referencing off the tractor and I'll probably go off that edge there across yes yeah, so if I put a straight edge up there and then measure across then I can use that as a reference on the plate as well and then measure from there up to the hole. Right, it's a moment of truth, seeing whether my bolt holes are in the right place.
fiddly. Look like we should be right. Got that one started. That bolt's not long enough. Don't know why it's so short. So we'll have to get some longer bolts. So I've made a little bit of a schoolboy error with this one. I just I laid the other plate on over the top of this one, thinking the bolt holes be the same. And they're not. These bolt holes are lower. So I'll have to fill them up with weld. And redrill them. Not really a problem, but a bit annoying. Right, that's better, our new bolt holes match up properly now. But again, the bolts are too short. So we're gonna have to get some longer bolts. But what we can do now is put a press on here. I think we'll press it like 50 mil down and get that point in, in over like that. Right, so I need it pressing across there now, at that angle. Right, so I've got these side plates uh, bolted on now, uh, just for one bolt, because I'm still short of bolts, but fits nice around there, nice around there. I'll put another press, just a little one there, just to help, just to bring it, this one up a little bit, and then i put another press at the bottom there, same on both sides. So then I can put a plate across the bottom there to box the bottom in, and then I'll plasma some side plates out to fill that. Big gap up there, I think. I think I'll also plasma plate out to fill that gap in as well, just to make sure everything is in fully enclosed in. So then this is the other side. So I think I am gonna have to take the battery box out because I'll, I'll never get that plate in. 
um, with it on. But I've made it so the battery box, I've made it so it's, the top plate sits on top of this plate and then that should be right for the battery box to sit straight on top of it. I'll have to drill it and bolt it to it, but then this should all be in the right place for the bonnet. So we'll take all this lot off now. Right, so that's the top plate sat on. Uh, my notch was about right. I just wants a little bit grinding off there where it's touching, just because it's just this way a little bit. But yeah, that's, it's about the same height as a battery tray bracket. So when the battery tray sits back on there, it should be exactly where it needs to be. And then I can just drill through here and then either tap this, yeah, I'll probably tap them holes and the battery tray will bolt straight onto that. And then these strips that I cut out, I'll drill and tap them and they'll get welded onto this top plate and then bolt through there like that. Right, so I'm just tapping these now. This is the second one. I've got all them done just on the last hole. So I've just been printing the drill, spinning it in the drill and then stopping it just as the plate goes in, just as the tap goes in, and then just finishing it off by hand. All right, so I've got them bits of plate that I was tapping bolted onto the back there so now they want tacking across there with a the welder but i think i'll bring the tig welder across to do that i can get and then i'm not spraying everything with sparks right so i've got this piece this piece cut out this goes in there like that stop any shrapnel coming back back at your legs your feet whatever <clears throat> um the way i the way i drew that is this is, the best, this is the best way I've found to draw stuff like this is, so I mark every 20 mil down. You can do it every 10 mil or every five mil, depends how accurate you want to be. And then measure across 90 degrees from that measurement across to there. And then, so it all written down here. So I know that like 140 mil down, I need to be 70 mil across. And then if you do it every 20 mil, it gives you like a graph of of uh, you know where you need to be, and then with this bit that I pressed, I just I uh, put a straight edge down there and measured across from the straight edge on how much it goes in. Same with there, and that's just the easiest way I found of getting a pattern like that. Sometimes I'll draw a cardboard pattern. Depends what I'm doing, but stuff like this, just I just do it off measurements. And then because that edge is not straight. I have to put a little bit of a bend on it. Anyway, it needs another bend at the bottom yet. Um, the reason why I didn't make it straight is because I wanted it a bit wider where it goes past there. But I didn't want it too wide at the top because I didn't want to disrupt any of, the, of that bracket or anything. So that's why it's like that. Right, so I'm ready, ready to uh, tack this plate on now. So I was going to do it with a TIG welder, but the TIG welder's all the way over there and it means having to bring all the cables and the little gas bottle across and everything, so I'm just going to do it with a MIG because that'll reach. Uh, I'll just have to cover up a few bits just so I don't get any spatter on it. So that's tacked round a little bit to ground out at the top and a little bit to ground out at the bottom just to make the gap all the same all the way up. Right, so I've got this side one ready as well now. I've had, to, I've had to notch a bit out of it 
for where the uh, clutch linkage goes. So I can that's ready. That's ready to tack in now. Right, so I've got the bottom plate cut out and clamped into position. And I've just gone through the bolt holes. I've just gone through it with a drill just to mark where the hole centers are. I'm gonna take these off. I can drill them holes once it's off. And I might just put another plate up there as well just to box in this side because there's quite a gap there. So I've just cut this bit out of a spare bit of plate I had. Uh, that'll go across the front there like that. And that'll get welded onto the bottom plate that goes under here. Um, but I'll, I can take it in bits now. Take it in bits and weld up down them sides and then weld that that plate onto the back, onto the top of, onto there. Not, not very keen on how that bit looks but I've had to put a little press on that bit because the block comes in front of this bit of plate and if if I hadn't put a press on it, it'd have either been on an angle like that or there'd have been a gap down there. So I've just put a bit of a press on there just to cover that space in. So yeah, I can take it all in bits now and start welding it up. Right, so these are the three bits that are ready to weld up now. So the, the top, put a runner weld down there. Same that side. These, there's a nice corner to fill. A little bit there to fill. We didn't quite match up, but I just, I cut them both out the same. Um, but yeah, it's just not quite matched up. Anyway, that'll fill up, fill in all right. Then there's that to weld. And then same, down around that edge. I'll put a few good heavy tacks on the inside to make sure it doesn't pull it out and then I might put just put some stitches down the inside as well so we can uh, get on and weld them up now
Right, so that's them welded up now. Little bit of undercut on that one, I should have had it turned on a better angle. And then I've just stitched them in between where the threads are. Should have had crater fill turned on on the welder just to fill in the end of the weld a little bit, but be all right. Right, so that's them pieces all welded up and weld smoothed out. What I'm going to do now is put it back on the tractor. I've got them holes drilled as well. Um, yeah, I have to put it back on the tractor. And what I should have done before I took it in bits was mark the holes for where the battery tray needed to be. But anyway, I forgot to do that. So put it back on the tractor. And then I think I'll probably weld nuts on the back of there. Because it was it'd be too difficult to tap them and get them nice and... It'd be too difficult to tap them and get them straight, so I thought it'd just be quicker and easier to weld nuts on the back. But I need to put it all back together, put the plate underneath, you know, bolt it up, and then tack the nuts on. Right, so I've got the box put back on with all the bolts in. Found some spare bolts to go in there. Uh, they're all in. I've drilled and tapped two bolt holes to mount the, the uh, fuel filter housing on. I've reused the old bracket that held the fuel pump. I've just tacked that on for now. Um, I've marked through them holes where the battery box needs to be bolted through. That all fits on how it should. I've got them bolts underneath for that bottom plate. And I've tacked some nuts on the inside and I'll, I'll weld them nuts round. If I'd have planned it a bit better, I could have drilled and tapped them, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got that front plate tacked on. So that just needs welding up now. And this is it, the other side. Got both bolts in there, all them bolts in. That fits nice from there. It clears the clutch. When you press the clutch down, that clears. Right, so I'm going to take it off again now for hopefully the final time. I'm do them last few jobs. But then before I put it back on, I've got the whole tractor to split because the customer wants the clutch upgrading. And it's got a twin plate clutch in it already, but apparently it only has organic clutch plates and the customer wants some upgrading to these ceramic plates because these take a lot more abuse than what the organic ones do. Right so that'll do for this video I'll end it here while it's still together but there'll be a part two coming soon where I split the engine away from the gearbox and then uh, take the clutch out and upgrade the clutch. Well yeah thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video.